Good morning, everybody. My name is Adam Evangelista. The date is April 15, 2021. It is the peak of springtime over here in Southern California. We have a high 60s, partly cloudy. It is truly the season of new beginnings. And what better time of year than now to talk about what's new in Autodesk Vault 2020? Woo, yay! <laughs> uh, we've assembled quite a list of panelists here for you guys here today, a bunch of great industry experts. Uh, from our team in particular, we have the magnanimous Phil Steiger, the gregarious Adam Board, and the benevolent Jason Cordemont, whom I'll let introduce themselves right now, if you guys don't mind. Sure. I'm Phil Steiger, and I'm, uh, I oversee all of Vault services for Kachiv. My name is Adam Board. I work under Phil Steiger and I do a lot of the internal development for the Vault Services team. And I'm Jason Cordovanch. I'm one of the application engineers at Kativ. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. And next up, you may have already seen him replying to your various forum posts on the Autodesk Knowledge Network, maybe some various press beta releases from him. The man, the myth, the legend himself, ladies and gentlemen. We have Irvin Hayes with us here today. How you doing, Irvin? I'm doing well, Adam. How are you? Uh, happy to be here. I appreciate the invite. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on here today. Uh, what do you got in store for us here today, Irvin? Oh, well, you know, Adam, I'm really excited to share that the 2020 version of Autodesk Fall has made its way to our subscribers. Uh, it was made available earlier this month on April 6th. And you know, it delivers on the feedback from our users from our live events, our Evolve Ideas boards, and I vault beta community with new experience person, persona based and customer driven enhance with the features. Uh, so it's very exciting and I'm, I'm really happy to get into this presentation today to show all of the attendees and others who might be watching this recording how Vault 2022 is going to help them understand uh, the new features and get it uh, deployed and installed in their uh, environments. That sounds fantastic, Irvin. Yeah, thanks again for being here. I'm very excited. I think we all are. Now, just a bit of a housekeeping here as well. This is a, a Zoom meeting, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to interact with us over the Q&A or the chat panel. We'll be moderating questions as we go along. Uh, you could expect some poll questions to show up later on. And of course, there is a survey at the end of all of this as well, which you guys are welcome to fill out for some extra feedback. Um, and I think with that, uh, I'm going to hand it back to you, Irvin. Um, Take it away, man. Take us on this ride here. All right. Thank you, Adam. So again, welcome, everyone. Um, again, we're really excited here. So let's get jump right into what's new for Vault 22, uh, 2022 uh, and get you started on this new adventure. With the 2022 release, we're delivering a more modern, connected, and insightful user experience. Well, how do we do that? With this release, we uh, base the features on user personas and roles within the company. We made sure each role got the right set of capabilities and the best technology to access those capabilities. For authors like inventor users, we're making sure that they are connected to the design data and focus on the work they love while remaining inside of inventor. We unlock more design data information by delivering a better integrated data experience and effectively managing engineering bomb variants. However, to make sure the whole experience for authors and other users works smoothly, investment has been made to modernize the overall administration experience, including authentication options, replication, and enhanced user and group management. For participants, we help them access and work with engineering data in an office or on the go on the desktop or with mobile devices, within the organization or with external contractors and stakeholders. Whether with Vault's new browser experience or with the Vault mobile app, it will keep work moving on the top floor, on the shop floor and beyond. With 2022, collaboration is easier than ever. And Adam, I think we have a poll that we want to give to our users real quick. Yes, sir. Let me launch that really quickly here. All right, you should see a poll uh, show up on your screen over there. There should be about three different questions. Or just some curiosities that we'd like to know more about you guys. What kind of vault are you using? Where is your vault going to be deployed exactly? And what type of user are you in the current dichotomy that you see on screen over here? 
Well, we got a lot of admins, it looks like, a lot of local servers, Vault Pro, you love to see it, absolutely. I'll give that a few moments here. And I, I guess I should emphasize at this point too, there's there's something for everybody regardless. Absolutely. Uh, but just, yeah. And so just about a minute in here, I'm going to go ahead and call the polling over here. I'm going to call the polling over here uh, and polling. Uh, what do we got? We got Pro in the vast majority. About 80% of users are using Vault Pro. Again, love to see it. Where's your Vault deployed? Local server. Again, there's a lot of functionality out there on the cloud in addition, but you know, whatever floats your boat over there. Uh, what type of user? We have a pretty good mix between authors and administrators over here. And then of course, participants as well. Um, I guess do with that with what you will, Irvin, and uh, see what you got next. Well, we've got something for everybody, for all those personas. Let's talk about it. Beautiful. So let's start by showing out how the authors can stay focused on the work that they love. A design engineer needs access to design data, such as where a component is used, engineering bill of materials, or change order information. It would help if you had a solution to connect and expose engineering data in an integrated data experience. So let me show you what I mean by that. Inside of Inventor, we added an integrated data experience to access and organize all design information in the Dockable panel. Inside of this panel, the designer can see what a design is used, uh, where a design is used before making changes. The designer can assign an item and derive engineering bomb information within the environment without leaving the application. In addition, he can access change order information related to the design to understand why change has has been triggered and the goal of the change request. After clicking on the show details button in the vault ribbon, the show design dialog will appear. The dialog is a dockable panel, panel which can be placed anywhere inside of Inventor. In the panel, the user can see a lot of information about the current model. This includes the history, the uses, the where used change orders, and the bill of materials information. When a component is selected in the model of the vault browser or selected in the uh, graphic window, the show designs panel will switch to show the information for the specific component. By right clicking on any of the components in the panel, the user can go to the associated change order item or file location within the vault uh, client. Columns can be added to show more information to the user that's very important for them to see. The user can also right click on any component in the panel to open it uh, inside of Inventor and assign or update an item uh, can also be done with inside of the same panel, as well as we're showing you still the existing uh, ability to check in as well as uh, change the state or uh, of the product as well or the component as well. It's essential to know how or who uh, has approved a final decision or a final design and when it's approved. In the 2022 release, we added the latest approver and the latest release date properties to track this information. These property values can be added to a drawing revision table and title blocks for history uh, for historical record keeping. And we're showing this in the images here. Within Inventor's new, uh, with Inventor's new model state feature, a designer can check in all model representations inside Vault for easy access. Using the open and place command, a designer can select the appropriate model state file from Vault, open it for editing, or place it in an assembly. Also, each model state is recorded in the Vault item master for more efficient bomb variant management with appropriate part number and metadata. The Inventor and Revit interop provides the option to check in and archive Revit files referenced within Inventor assemblies. Changes to the Revit model are made inside of Inventor via the AnyCAD reference. On check-in of the Revit model, Vault Professional understands the relationship between Inventor and Revit files. And with check-in, the updated files and their property information uh, back in the Vault where the Revit files can be searched, um, their properties and relationship can be viewed, and versions managed. Throughout an organization, many designs are copies of the sim same or similar or existing uh, uh, to existing designs. Imagine having hundreds of the same bolts, multiple copies of the same bracket, et cetera. 
what if you were able to save money and reduce duplicate parts within your environment? The duplicate search function feature uh, increases profitability by indicating identical models, reducing the number of duplicates, and allowing mechanical engineers to continue to have the freedom to design the way they want. New filter criteria is now added to the duplicate search feature so you can filter your results better, such as on the same material, mirror, mirrored parts, and exact matches. Now that we've covered those enhancements for CAD user productivity, let's cover how administrators can optimize their deployment and manage their teams easier. Teams can be spread all over in an organization and with a lot of team members, managing their access to Vault can be challenging. Another challenge is deploying Vault throughout an organization for dispersed team members. With Vault 2022, we have made enhancements to address these challenges. Again, you asked and we listened. Based on our Vault Pro customer analytics, more than 70% of customers enable Active Directory integration with Vault user and group management. To align with other Audit services you might be leveraging today, like Shared View, Fusion 360, or BIM 360, Vault 2022 now supports Audit ID authentication as an additional option. With, along with the user, uh, with the Vault user and Active Directory support. With multi-authentication uh, support, an administrator can choose the best way for Vault users to log in and access the data. Vault 2022 adds the ability to include profile attributes to users and group profiles, similar to user-defined properties on the files, folders, and items. These attributes can uh, be used to uh, add location, uh, departments and division, or other custom attributes that you might want to manage to the user and group's profile. The profile attributes can be mapped to Active Directory properties for quick access and easy management. And lastly, administrators can configure a friendly display name inside a vault to quickly identify who created or modified objects. The friendly display name can also be mapped to title attributes and other file properties to improve record keeping and easy identification. So let's take a look at this new functionality uh, to help improve the user and group management profile. So in Vault 2022, the user and group management has been combined into one dialog for easy management. The administrator can add user profile attributes to user and groups inside of Vault. And these attributes can be, again, the location, the department, or other description that applies to the user and groups. The user uh, profile can be uh, can be seen, uh, or get, excuse me, in this case, we're showing you that the location has now been added, and now we're creating a new user, and we now can add the information to these profile attributes that are assigned to this particular user. Also, you have the ability now to assign the user, or give the user the ability to log in using the multiple authentication methods. In the previous releases, if you wanted to have an account that used the Vault account or a Windows authentication account, you had to have two separate accounts for that one particular user. In 2022, we combined both of those accounts into one account that has multiple authentication methods. And again, that includes the Vault account, the Windows authentication account, or the Audit SID. We've improved the user and group management profile uh, dialog or user and group management dialog to where you can add custom columns that shows all this information, and you can filter the information based on what you want to need or who you're searching for. And it could be searching and filtering based off of these profiles that you've created, that you've assigned to the users or group management. So in the 2022 release, we've added more information to our audit log. The audit log on the server already tracked file downloads and deletions by a user. Now the audit log will record the user name, the date and time, and which vault they logged into. It will also record which client and authentication type they use. In this illustration, we're showing you that Mike, he used the thin client to log into the vault eight using it as his audit SID on January 2nd, 2021 at 3.45 p.m. 
He downloaded 144 files and he deleted five files, and that information is, can be tracked or and seen inside of the auto log itself. This information gives the administrator the ability to track who, when, and how team members access Vault. This, histori this history uh, of activities on the server ensures the administrator has what they need to re for record keeping and audit tracking purposes. Vault is a scalable uh, and is scalable for any size team and enables multi-site collaboration. If a customer has different departments, divisions, or locations across different geographies, Vault replication technology supports people working collaboratively as if they were all in the same location. Replication enables 24-7 engineering and design work and productivity in uh, an organization. We made some significant changes in, uh, to the replication technology used in Vault, specifically around database replication. In previous Vault releases, replication allowed users to connect to a subscriber or publisher to perform read-write operations on those servers, and afterwards, the data was, uh, is merged together automatically. With that implementation, we had an ownership model which required uh, a work group or to own an object before users could modify it. The ownership model and other needs had, uh, had us rethink the database replication concept. In the 2022 release, we changed replication technology so that the publisher is the only rewrite location in the environment. This change improves usability by eliminating the need for object ownership and improves replication stability and reliability. To help our administrators create, manage, and deploy the Vault client, the Vault 2022 release installs all of the Vault add-ins at the same time as the client. If a CAD application is installed after the client, the Vault add-in is automatically loaded into the CAD application without having to modify the client installation. In this release, the data standard installation is one install instead of separate installers as it was previously. Also, the Vault Office uh, application is a separate installer from the Vault workgroup and a professional client. This new way of installing components makes it easier for the administrator to deploy Vault across the entire organization with less complexity. Now, in this section, we're going to cover how participants can access and work with engineering data in the office or on the go. Let's talk about solving participant challenges by providing a more connected data experience. Participants are now our non-CAD designers who need access to design data and engineering documentation. In many scenarios, the goal, the primary goal is to reduce the need to print out paper documents on the shop floor before visiting a customer or in the field. All users want to feel confident that they are accessing the, and viewing the correct and up-to-date data uh, or information without going back and asking designers for the data. Also, they want to have an easy way to search for design and engineering data without remembering a part number or other important information. Whether participants on the shop floor, at a customer site, or in the field, the Vault 2022 release allows them to access and contribute to project-relevant data. Now, let's take a look at what we're talking about. Participants can now use a more modern thin client that provides a better user experience. Because the thin client is browser-based, there's zero deployment for administrators to manage. Participants can use the thin client on the desktop or tablet, giving them a lot of flexibility. For example, we integrated Autodesk Viewer into the thin client, allowing the user uh, to view multiple 2D and 3D designs in separate browser tabs. The thin client user can access uh, have access to change order information, folder and project links, the ability to multi-select files for viewing or downloading. Users can also share desktop and web browser links via email. Um, and I've only touched on a few of the great browser experience changes that we've made to increase the thin client user's productivity. So let's take a quick look at a, at a, at a demo of this particular uh, change. So here's the new login interface. We've logged into the user account, and now we see the new interface and the details of this particular file. We can view this model in, inside of the new Autodesk Viewer integration. 
This integration provides a better experience from our previous integration, uh, as well as new capabilities that we just did not have. And you can see that here in this particular demo. This is a uh, viewing experience is similar to what we have on AutodeskViewer.com as well. So here the user uh, can see the Uses tab and information there. You can see the word used, customize the view by adding columns and the necessary information that they need to see. They also now have access to items um, and, and see the item related information right there in the view uh, related links. They can access information about the project, the categories, the life cycle. Here's an example of how you can multi-select files and then download all of these files all at one time instead of downloading them separately or independently from each other. You can send a link for all of these files or multiple selected files at one time, as well as see change order information, which we did not provide before in previous releases. So this is just showing you a bit of what we've done and everything that you can actually have access to now within the new thin client. And it's just showing you again, all the relevant information that's there available for the thin client user, uh, as well as here the ability to create a visualization file if one doesn't exist for a particular model. This is also showing again, the multi-tab capability. So if you're actually doing multiple selected models at one time and you hit the view, you can view them all in separate tabs. Uh, this prevents um, the user from or not prevents it, it actually uh, provides a way that the user doesn't have to download the information. It can just open it up right in the model browser. Now, the world we live in is mobile and you need access to data quickly and easily, no matter where you are. Let's talk about the Vault Mobile app. If you've been following our Vault updates, we introduced the Vault Mobile app in February of this year. The Vault Mobile application is now available on both the Apple Apple Store, App Store, and the Google Play Store. The application is compatible with tablets and phones running iOS version 12 and later, or Android version 8 and later. It is compatible with the Vault Professional 2022, or excuse me, 2020, 2021, and we will be updating it shortly to be compatible with the 2022 servers. A Vault Professional or a Vault Office subscription is required to use the mobile application. And in order to participate, uh, in order for a participant to use the app, they will need to ask their product license administrator to turn on the Vault Mobile entitlement for their Autodesk account. So in conclusion, we discussed about how Vault 2022 release allows authors to focus on design work and better integrated data experience, enhancements that help the administrator optimize their deployments and manage their teams easier. Also, how Vault 2022 allows participants to stay connected to, our, uh, to the correct engineering data at the right time and a modern thin client interface and a mobile, uh, mobile app for phones and tablet users. Vault 2022 is packed with many features that will help every user role and responsibility. So with that, I can jump over to any questions that were uh, available during the presentation that I haven't covered or someone has to ask. So Adam, you got some questions for me? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, yeah, so we got uh, quite a few questions in here. Let's see if we could parse through some of these. Um, from Mario over here, is there any way to insert to CAD functionality, to insert to CAD functionality of IPT or IAM files from item master or item window? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe there is a way to directly insert uh, parts and files from items into your CAD functionality. Is that your understanding as well? I don't think there's anything new in 2022. In uh, there's nothing new in 2022 to actually uh, to do that, particularly from the items or change orders. You can go straight to the file and then select insert in the CAD, I believe is the command, mm -hmm. and that will put it into your model. Right, um, right. Yeah, that's done from the vault client, but we haven't done it from, I believe, the items or change orders uh, I see. area. I see. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. Another question. This is on the duplicate functions, uh, the detect duplicates we were talking about earlier from Claudio. Does this extend to content center? For example, if I have duplicates existing in five places, can I replace them all with a content center part? I believe you can. I, if you don't, if you don't need to reference the actual database, you could always pull the library part as well. Um, is that your understanding as well, though, Urban? Yes, I believe that that is correct. 
your, your answer is correct there. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Claudio. Dennis, we have many low-level models that are identical but have different metadata. Please comment if there is any change to address this. Um, uh, no, I don't believe that we've changed anything for comparing the metadata themselves. And the duplicate, duplicate search functionality is more about the geometry than it is the metadata. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, as I, I know that the duplicate um, search and um, and vault is heavily dependent on the geometry itself. Correct. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Got that. Uh, there was this question here too. I think Jason already responded to redo here. I uh, was wondering about where you would see like the the track of deleted files, and I believe that is in the new audit logs as well, right? If someone wanted to find what file someone deleted, that should be available in the logs as well. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, it is the to track who's deleted files it's in the audit log. The key thing is, is you have to turn it on. Uh, because it's off by default. So oh, uh -huh. if you go into the administrative council or the ADMS council, you go into the tools administration uh, in the in the logging section, you'll see uh, the, the new check boxes. You, in previous releases, you had to edit the config file, but we put them now in the uh, in the council. So now you have to just check the box that says record uh, deleted files nice, uh, nice or nice. downloaded files. And that was a that was a heavily requested feature to bring back to Vault. Is that right? You were telling us. Like the, uh, which one? Uh, you're talking about like the uh, the more verbose logging or the more um, you know the more extensive logging, I believe. Yeah. So so um, prior to the 2017 release, we always had the ability to track when a mm -hmm. user logged in mm -hmm. uh, because licensing were, was was the network licensing. When we switched to 20 uh, to the the new licensing, which also included network licensing from the client, we lost that ability. Uh, and of course, a lot of our users came back to us saying, "Hey, we, that was very important to them for audit tracking." Um, so we just now added that back, uh, and that also has to be turned on because it is off by default. Uh, so you, now you can turn it on, and actually we give you more information um, in there. As I mentioned earlier, the username, when they logged in, what vault they logged in, the authentication type, and the client that they use. Um, if you're building third-party applications or, or your own custom application that logs in, um, there are ways in the SDK so you can also track that uh, app and, and oh, what you right that app to log in. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were having a lot of conversation about that recently. The, the tracking and reporting is definitely a bigger conversation moving forward for sure. So it's good to know that you guys are working on it. Absolutely. Ask and you shall receive, as they say. <laughs> Another question from Claudio Absolutely. here. <laughs> Can I use multiple download items feature to get all released children drawings associated with an assembly or all files belonging to a specific category under an assembly? Um, I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm wondering if he's asking that from the thin client perspective because you can now multi-select. The thin client uh, still does not does not download based on the references, so you'd have to select everything. I, um, that's, I think that's something we might work on in the future. Uh, don't quote me on that, but as of right now, it will only download the file that you selected, not their reference. I see. I see. Interesting. Okay, that's still that's still very nice. Another one here from Ravi. Any enhancements to retain older version of model or drawing file? Um, well, Vault does track the previous versions already pretty significantly. I'm not sure if you're looking for something a bit more beyond that, Ravi. Um, do you have anything to say about that, Servan? Yeah, um, no. I'm, you know, I, I think the only uh, if he's using Vault Basic, maybe that tracking is not uh, or that ability is not as apparent or not as easy as using work group or professional because as you stated mm -hmm. in work group professional you can um you, you, those can be stored and, and saved based on the revision and the release date so i, I think uh we probably have to get more into that question to make sure we answer it correctly i got you i got you okay thank you thank you uh, this one about life cycle status comes automatically in a file when we change, can life cycle status come automatically in a file when we change the life cycle to released? Um, I'm not sure if we covered life cycles here during this presentation exactly. Um, life cycle status comes automatically in a file when we change the life cycle to released. So sure. if you that. are changing your file from, let's say, work in progress to release, um, mm -hmm. The transition action, if you tell it to synchronize properties and you're putting that value within the file and a file property, um, that can already happen today. So that, that's, that would be nothing right, new right. in the 2022 release. 
It does sound familiar, right? Okay. Um, another question for Mario. Are you able to assign item category from inventor? Um, I... um, so the key thing uh, about assigning the category, you can assign an item, uh, you can assign an item to a model. Uh, if you're using rules um, on those, then the rules should apply even with an inventor. So this should automatically happen. Can you change that? Uh, I don't believe we put in the ability to change the category of the item though from uh, inside of uh, inventor in that, uh, in that new uh, show details pane. I don't think that that's not in there. Right. I, I do like the new details tab in the inventor, but uh, it does sound like there's a lot of good connections to vault from the inventor side now, at least more so than in the past. Uh, Another question here. Um, can you create a change order form for your company standard in Vault 2022? Uh, no, uh, um, unfortunately not. Change orders are, are pretty locked down All right. All on right. what's in them. Uh, you can obviously create, um, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're pretty much locked down to what they are. There's nothing okay. customizable for the change orders at this point. That sounds right. Okay, I got you. And then I think there was a, another follow up from Redu about the, uh, the recycle bin just available for all admins. And just to, just to quote you here, Jason, Jason's responding in the chat here as well. So for Redu, just to make sure there is no recycle bin available for admins for deleted files, correct? Once a file's deleted, there's no way to go back into and restore the last full backup, uh, or you can back besides restoring the full backup in the local workspace. Okay. Thank you, yeah, Jason. That, that answer is correct, yeah. So there's, there's no recycle bin inside of all, yeah. Okay, cool, okay. And so I think those are all the questions we have live here so far. Uh, I'll double check with Trang here. I think we're looking okay. Um, are there any other questions uh, the rest of the Vault panelists would like to ask at this point as well, just out of curiosity? Any other discussion you guys would like to bring up? Um, I know that we had some fans of like the new replication, for example, if you guys wanna dig into that a little bit. Definitely. Yeah, the question I just want a clarification on so everyone's aware is when you're upgrading and doing an in-place upgrade, you need to break replication and bring it back to a single site before you upgrade from a previous version of Vault to 2022? Yeah, it's a very good question, uh, Jason. Uh, and I believe that's very important for our current customers who are in the replication uh, environment to know. Um, there's two ways to, to handle this particular migration. And first and foremost, I will always say this, you'll probably always hear me say this in, in uh, a lot of AU classes. You need to test this migration first. Make sure you have a clear understanding what it takes to do this migration. Uh, it gives you somewhat of a, 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 an understanding of how long it might take this, uh, to take it to migrate to this new version as well and how, how long it'll take to rebuild it. So. Uh, and you do that before you do it in the production environment. So, uh, so to answer your question, uh, yes, replication as it has been before in prior releases will have to be um, pretty much dismantled. Uh, you can do it in one of two ways. You can do it manually um, or before you do the upgrade, or you can allow the upgrade to do it before you. The um, caveats are that all the subscribers must be online and must be reachable. Um, we, we do uh, prefer that particular scenario, although we can we can disable the replication without those subscribers, but we don't want to be missing any information because we force a replication at that point in time. Uh, so once replication has been dismantled, you don't have to uninstall SQL at those subscribers. You don't have to change anything. As a matter of fact, your file store locations can still remain. Uh, so the files that are located there, don't remove them, don't delete them, don't, don't do anything. Uh, after the migration occurs on the primary or the publisher, as it's known, uh, then you rebuild replication as it was before, and the dialogues all look the same. We haven't actually changed any of the dialogues or uh, what's required for information there. Uh, so start up the replication again, uh, enable the replication, connect to your subscribers, and then the new technology will be um, implemented at that particular time. And then once you enable rep, uh, a particular vault on a subscriber, you can connect it to your existing file store. So there's no need to worry about the files that are there or, or putting the files back there. Uh, if they're there already, leave them, then reconnect them on the network. 
It sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to taking more of those calls in the future. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any, anything else from the, the Walt team over here? Anything else you guys would like to discuss a bit more in depth here? Phil, Adam? I, I just want to go over what you talked about, Urban, about loading. It loads the vault uh, for the vault client. You no longer have to do order of operation where you used to have to load Inventor, Autodesk, and then Vault. Now you could load Vault and then load Inventor because it's automatically going to put the add in and even afterward. That's a big deal for IT going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, sometimes you never know, right? You might have a group of people who are using Inventor. They're Inventor only. So you've installed Inventor. You've installed, installed the Vault client. And later on, for whatever reason, that a few of those people now need AutoCAD. You know, what for whatever reason, or, or another product, they install that other product, and in previous releases, what they have to do is they have to um, they have to do really one of two things. They would have to go into the uh, add remove programs and modify the installation of the client, and then add that add in that missing add in to the, to the product that was installed afterwards. Um, but for users who don't have administrative privileges on their workstation, they have to call the administrator to get this modification. Uh, done for them. Now it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the, the vault client now, you install it, all the add-ins are there uh, pre-installed, so there's no worry about sequencing as it has been in the past, and that the, the CAD application will pick it up automatically. Um, it was something that, that we've been asked for for a long time. Uh, it was a new install change. We've made it faster. Uh, you'll see this across multiple products. The installations are faster. Um, they're more reliable, uh, and then there are obviously improvements uh, in, in each of the installers for each of the applications. So, and for Vault, this is one of our main improvements that we wanted to give to our users. Yeah, it's really exciting to hear. I'm, I'm looking forward to less of those calls myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what about you, Adam Board? Um, I've been calling him Double D internally. I don't know if he likes it yet, but <laughs> I'm going to see if it sticks. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right with it. Uh, no, I think the, uh, the Vault mobile app is a really good feature. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of need for being able to view models or, you know, uh, data on the shop floor or out in the field. And I think that's a really good way to, to get some of that data directly to the, you know, to the end user. Uh, one thing I do want to say about it is you have to still make sure that you're connected to your company through your VPN or whatever. It's, it's not an external connection per se, but it's definitely a good way once you're logged in through VPN on a tablet or whatever, you can view the data you need to right there on the shop floor. Right, exactly. I mean, that mobile, the mobile app has, has given us more flexibility and given the users more flexibility of how they access that important data and when they access it and where they access it from. Uh, as you stated, it doesn't change the fact that the server has to be available to the user. It doesn't automatically put the server out on the internet. So if you're, you know, at a customer site or on, on the job site, you have access to it. They are either need VPN or you need a different way of exposing the vault server to the internet so that that mobile user, the user outside of the company network can gain access. But it provides so much more flexibility uh, to the data uh, on tablets that we use every day. You know, every, every one of us either has a tablet, has a mobile phone, or has both. Um, Right. Why carry around a PC half the time when you can use the app right on the tablet or your phone? Yeah. Yeah, it's good to really living in a digital age right now, for sure. Absolutely. But, um, I think we do have a few more questions, or we have a few more slides to go over still. So one last bit from yeah. Claudio over here. What new, future, uh, what new feature are you most excited about, Urban, and why? <laughs> what new feature I'm, I'm, I'm most excited about? Um, and why? So uh, my background is IT. Um, so there are a couple of features uh, I would say that I'm, I'm most excited about. Um, one is the new user and group management. Um, I tell you, even my, my, me, myself personally, uh, um, have wanted to upgrade this experience for our administrators for a very long time. I think our change here in this release has done, uh, has taken a a big step forward in making it easier for uh, our administrators to manage the users and groups, as well as the multi-authentication uh, capabilities for one specific user account. Um, different devices, you're, different, you're, you're out uh, in a way, you know, a user who on the inside of the network who would normally log in with their uh, Windows authentication, they can't do that when they're mobile or out of the office and off of the domain. 
that same user now can use their Autodesk ID or a vault account. So it provides that flexibility there for the users, makes it a lot easier to manage the users uh, and everything else. I always, I'll be honest, I always hated the fact that you had to go into one dialogue to manage users, close that dialogue, and then go into a different dialogue to manage groups. Um, we, by combining them now in one context uh, or one dialogue where I can switch between the two very easily. So that's one I'm really excited about. The second one I'm really excited about is the replication technology change. Um, you know, we've had, uh, customers have had difficulty in the past when subscribers would follow the retention period and the next, you know, they had to repair the replication. Ownership model has always been a challenge for our, our customers. You're waiting for ownership to go from one group work group to the next. Now ownership is completely gone. Um, this, this provides so much better, uh, <laughs> how do you say it? I'm not even speaking right English. It provides better uh, and more efficient uh, use uh, experience for our users. Uh, so therefore, without having to worry about ownership, only one place ever owns it. Everyone can continue to work normally and faster. And replication actually to the subscribers work faster uh, than in the old replication technology as well. You know, the other part of that is that we reviewed a lot of our larger customers' log files and found out 98% of the activity to a server was read. So therefore, the read operations for the users that are on the subscriber stay the same. Their write operations just go to the publisher. That's the only difference, which is very small. You know, if it's just that 2%, um, you'll, you'll hit that 2%, very small. It's only metadata that's transferred. So your file replication change, uh, file replication in this environment doesn't change. It works the same as it has been in the past. So if you're connected to a subscriber, you check in, uh, an assembly or, or model, those files check into the subscriber, but the metadata rights go to the publisher. But uh, so we're, we're really, we're, we really believe that this new technology is going to solve a lot of customer problems and ease a lot of administrative burden and overhead in the long run. So that's a very exciting thing to have. Yeah, well said, Irvin Hayes, everybody. What a guy. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. I think you had a few more slides here, Irvin. Is that right? You have a few more slides. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, you know, again, as I stated earlier, a lot of these enhancements were um, given to us by you, the user, in, in various different forms. We have a lot of things going on in our feedback community. We talk about upcoming uh, features. We give you the ability to pilot test some of our features uh, and then give us feedback early before we design or make changes. The new user and group management, that was uh, provided to us as an idea from a customer. We took that idea, we started developing it, we talked about it in the feedback community, we got feedback from a lot of our participants, and then we made the enhancement. And we do a lot of that in our feedback community. So we encourage you, strongly encourage you all to make sure you're part of that feedback community. The ideas board is another way, again, to give us feedback. I monitor it, all of our vault PMs monitor the idea station, and we do review them. We do have conversations on them. Uh, and, and we do um, implement some of them. Some of them are easier uh, <laughs> to implement than others. So be patient. I know that a lot of them have been up there for a long time. There are a lot of ideas, um, but you know we are we will get to them as quickly as possible if we're able to. So so yeah. uh, participate in both. And obviously, one thing that's missing from here is our our feedback forum. If you have questions or or comments, and you're having difficulty. Post up there. A lot of our developers and myself are up there all the time answering your questions and trying to help you out as much as possible. So make sure you're part of the, the regular discussion forum as well. Yeah, I could I could back that up as well. There is uh, a part of the support, right? A lot of the questions I would get were specifically feature requests and stuff like that. And the, the developers and everyone on the team is very active on there as well. So it's a great place to submit all of your thoughts and discussions like uh, Urban's saying here. Absolutely. So this last one is for you, Adam. Oh, it's for me. I think I might uh, pass this to Phil Steiger, oh, who's yeah. uh, spearheading our vault as a service over here. <laughs> uh, it sort of ties into the last question you have up there by Raju exactly. yeah. about uh, Autodesk and in, in the cloud. And yeah, Kativ now has a new vault service called Vault as a Service, and it's a cloud-hosted solution where we have uh, private cloud uh, vault servers for in Azure 
and it gives uh, companies a way to move their vault from their current infrastructure into the cloud, and we take care of all the day-to-day -day operations for them, you know, alleviating all the infrastructure costs, networking, security, and the day-to-day -day management uh, for vault. And we do it all, and we provide you with a point-to-point -point tunnel um, to your company. Because more and more companies are moving to the cloud and we see this as an opportunity to help companies offload vault because most companies don't have a per se vault expert on staff. It's, it's rare. Yep, it is very rare and, and actually uh, um, they're offloading all, a lot of their IT services and, and this is just another service that uh, it's a great service for smaller companies who don't have IT departments to take advantage of. Right. And, you know, and, it, and I'm next week I'm doing a class on what to do to do an upgrade, how to prepare for a vault upgrade. And that's a big deal when you're doing an upgrade. And, and in this scenario, we do all the upgrades for you and keep you current. So. Excellent service. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we'll wrap it up. Uh, I hope. Thank you all. Thank you, Steve, and, and the supporting staff for inviting me here today. I hope everyone had uh, uh, received a bunch of great information for the 2022 release. I hope you uh, are able to implement and upgrade it, uh, your current environments easily uh, and quickly here uh, within the next year uh, or whenever your plans uh, suit you. So I'm uh, going to back to you. Oh, yeah. Thanks again, Irvin. It's always a pleasure to have you on. It's a fantastic presentation. I think there's a lot of good stuff to look forward to. I'd like to thank everyone else watching. On the, I'd like to thank the rest of the team as well. Phil, Adam, Jason, always appreciated. I'd like to thank everyone watching. Uh, feel free to join us next week where we'll be doing the same exact thing for AutoCAD 2020, what's new for next week. All right. And uh, again, look forward to some surveys and the follow-up emails and stuff like that. But otherwise, have a good rest of the week. Have a good Easter. Enjoy the spring. Enjoy the new beginnings. And we'll see you soon. Thanks all. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.